Hi, this is Dave Fleece. I'm the manager of the Elkhorn Slough Reserve. And today we're going to go out and look for reptiles and amphibians, or as we call it, herping. And that means we're going to go to different parts of the reserve and look under cover that I have placed on the ground. So, hold on, and, uh, and here we go. So I've placed items on the ground here that serve as artificial cover. And the hope is that some of these animals will find protection underneath these boards. So we usually do this in the spring when things start to warm up and these animals are coming out of hibernation and getting more active. I always try to use some sort of device to lift the boards with and this is actually designed for rattlesnakes. It's got a little grabber here and I don't use it much for rattlesnakes although I have because we do not have rattlesnakes here at the Elkhorn Slough, but if you're going to do this at home, please use a rake or a stick or something so that your hands are not going under places where you can't see. And so, with that, here we go. So this is a board that's been here for a few years. And let's take a look if there's anything under there. Nothing there. See a little stink bug. We got some burrows that are developing from rodents. See some fresh dirt here. So these, who knows how deep these burrows go, but that's where snakes will spend much of their time. And in the spring, they come up out of those holes, get near the surface, and uh, begin some surface activity. Okay, let's see if we've got anything here. Centipede, doing his own business there. One tin on the ground here. Actually carried this on the trail home from work one day, about a mile, carried it, placed it here. I only have one of these. Wonder why. And not much going on here. It's these uh, beetles here. That I would call stink bugs. My nephew would call them darkling beetles. In Spanish, pinacates. They are running crazy here. Let's check out this board over here. About the largest board I got, as far as I'm concerned, the bigger the better. No, nothing earlier today. Well, there's the Incitina. There's a nice little centipede. Slender salamander. Let's see, you can see him very well there. And then over here, really got an excellent board here. This is young juvenile in Satina. This is a lungless salamander. They range from the Pacific Northwest all the way down into Baja. Really interesting story distribution. This is the Monterey Encetina. Encetina is a genus and Encetina is very widely. Encetinas in the Sierra Nevada mountains have blotches 
uh, of color on their on their body and as you go further south they have larger blotches and Satina on the coast are patternless and it's thought that in Satina originated in the Pacific Northwest dispersed from that point and as they went south they diverted with one group going down the Sierra Nevada mountains the other coming down the coast and so the ones that went down the Sierra Nevada are very different with those large blotches as opposed to the ones on the coast but they're all the same species this animal starting to get into a defensive pose arching his back and uh, if we really take him off he may uh, exude some some toxins out of glands on his on his tail and his uh, and his back. There have this diagnostic constriction in the tail there that you can sort of see. Right there, there he goes. He's a little excited. He's a cool guy. He's only about two inches long. Pretty common here but very cryptic. So you don't see him unless you're really looking for him. Cool. That's our Incitina. Now let's go over here where the slender salamander was. All right, We're going to view this salamander in the hand. As you can see, he's very small. And they, they sort of get into this, they curl up into this watch spring position. Uh, and, and they really do blend in. But, uh, He's another lungless salamander, and uh, we'll get him to show himself a little bit. There's the, uh oh, there's the underside of this guy, and let's see his arms and legs here in a minute. All right, let's put him down here on the board. There we go. You can see his alarms, little toes, big, nice tail, big healthy individual. They store fat in that tail. So this guy's doing well. They're extremely common in our oak woodlands. Um, there's several species in California. And there's more species every time they do some DNA analysis. There are some species that live in desert areas where there's little seeps and uh, some of those animals have a, a range of 100 feet or so and which means that anywhere out of there they would not be able to survive. Remarkable animals surviving in extreme conditions. Well here it's a little more ideal. Nice and moist because again lungless salamander which means he's breathing through his skin also means, uh, like the Encetina, they do not have a, an aquatic larval stage. They lay eggs and the larvae develop in the eggs and then hatches as juveniles, fully formed juveniles. So no aquatic larval stage for lungless salamanders. Okay, just managed to expose a very nice Patricoceps. Slender salamander here. There we go. This guy's probably three inches long. Beautiful animal. It's about as big as they get. Definitely got some disturbed habitat here. Some poison hemlock, non native grasses. And we got a board here. Let's see if we can see if we got anything here. Well, hello. Look at that. There's our gopher snake. And then over here, another gopher snake. Two of them. He's kicking back. Gopher snake because he eats gophers and other rodents. You can see this uh, little stripe behind his eye that goes 
down diagonally. That's a di diagnostic feature. As well as four prefrontal scales. You want to count scales there between the eyes. And uh, beautiful animal. You can see there's a lot of variation in their patterns. This guy, a little bit lighter. Very nice. They're fairly inactive now. There's a nest right behind them. Because they're waiting for that mouse to make use of that nest. And they'll be first in line for a meal. So that's that's great to see. Two snakes. Earlier this week there was one snake here. So animals are starting to move. And they're moving where are they moving from? Well, they're moving from the underground. They're coming up out of burrows where they'll spend much of the winter. And then when it's warm enough, they'll come up to the surface. These boards allow them to come near the surface, get warm under the board, perhaps. A little heat coming through the board without exposing themselves. It's very cryptic animals. All right, buddy. I'm gonna leave you alone here. Okay, watch your head. There we go. Okay, let's see what else we can find. We're at a different part of the reserve here. I wanted to come check this board right here. That is a sharp-tailed snake. Beautiful animal. It's actually a pretty large sharp-tailed snake. They uh, feed ex almost exclusively on slugs, and they are adapted to doing that. I'm gonna grab him so we can take a closer look at him. As he disappears in the leaf litter. There we go. As I was saying, sharp-tailed snakes are adapted to feeding on slugs. They have a uh, the terminal spine on their tail, which you might be able to see there, is uh, very pointed. And it's thought that that allows them to sort of anchor themselves uh, in the ground as they wrap their mouth around a delicious slug. And in the back of their mouth, they have these forward or these rear facing sharp teeth that help them grab a hold of the slug and keep it from, from getting away. Uh, pretty interesting animals. They have a really beautiful, subtle color, it's sort of coppery and some translucence. And let's take a look at the underside of this guy. You get a little bit of the pattern there on the underside. This dude. And there's the little striped pattern. It's diagnostic of these, these cool animals. So, Contia tenuous, sharp-tailed snake. And through much research, citizen scientists and other folks determined that there were two species of sharp-tailed snakes here in Central California. In the forest, there's a long-tailed sharp-tailed snake. And uh, they did this by taking exhaustive measurements on animals and counting scales on the tail. Determined finally that they were a, a separate species. It's pretty cool. Okay, that's gonna, I'm gonna let him go. We'll watch him disappear in the leaf litter. And here he goes. And there he goes. So you can see, very cryptic. They're probably extremely numerous. There's two under this board, actually. Here's one over here that's been watching us. He's 
slowly going to go into the leaf litter. So this is where they reside, and you'd never know it. Unless you're exclusively looking for them, or look through a lot of leaf litter. And there is a lot of leaf litter in our forest here at the Elkhorn Slough. So sharp-tailed snake, one of the more interesting snake species that we have around here. Well, thanks for coming along on this little herping adventure. Hope we can do it again soon. And I also hope that someday soon we'll be able to open our gates and open our trails up so you can come out and explore these upland forests here at the Elkhorn Slough. Thanks. We'll see you soon.